Our guest today was appointed Chief Information Officer of the City of Chicago by Mayor Richard M. Daley in February 2006. He is also the Commissioner of the Department of Business and Information Services, the City's primary technology planning, implementation, and maintenance organization. Our guest today is responsible for, for protecting the city's existing investment in information technology. He received an MBA in 2005 from Kellogg's Graduate School of Management at Northwestern and a Bachelor of Engineering degree, a Bachelor of Engineering degree in Computer Science in Baroda, India. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the City Club of Chicago the Chief Information Officer, Hardy Bat. Hardy? Thanks, Jay, uh, for inviting me to speak today. I'm really honored to have this opportunity to address an organization with such a venerable history, bright future, and commitment to the city of Chicago. Before that, though, I'm thankful to Mayor Daly for giving me this grand opportunity to serve Chicagoans. I also want to acknowledge Alderman Loreno, Chair of the uh, city, city Council's Technology and Economic Development Committee, and for her continued support in fulfilling our mission, our BIS mission. I've spent 25, first 25 years of my life in India. However, I haven't stayed in a city as long as I have stayed in Chicago last nine years, as long as I have been in U.S. And I, I'm proud to say that Chicago is my home. I want to acknowledge and thank my wife, Jagruti Bhatt, who is here today with us. Thank you, Jagruti, for helping me make Chicago our home. And as they say, behind uh, every successful man, there's a woman. And by the way, behind every unsuccessful, there are two. She is. She is very much the reason why I'm here today. Today, uh, I want to bring you up to date on how technology has changed over the last few years and how the city is using it to serve Chicagoans better. I will briefly touch on what we did last year, what's coming up in 2007, including the citywide wireless broadband. I also want to briefly talk about the citizen facing the changing role of a public sector CIO. Let's first talk about how rapidly technology has changed. Whether you call it a digital age or innovation economy or even a flat world, virtually everyone acknowledges that advances in communications, information, and transportation technology have dramatically changed the way we interact with other people. Innovative new products and services are now more likely to come from collaborations across organizations and sectors. Consumers can now obtain news and multimedia content immediately through computers and cell phones. Flights from O'Hare can now reach Seoul, Shanghai, and Singapore without stopping for fuel. Who did Time Magazine name as the person of the year? You and me. Why? It's because of the tremendous advances in the user-generated content that is MySpace, YouTube, and Wikipedia. In short, people's expectations of the world around them are best described using the words like speed, personalization, agility, and flexibility. These changes in expectations, however, pose great challenges to both the private sector as well as the public sector. As iTunes offers us the ability to purchase over three and a half million songs instantly from our computer. Netflix enables us to borrow 70,000 movies without leaving our home, and Zipcar allows us to, bo to borrow dozens of cars with only a moment's notice. With that, federal, state, and local governments often remain a place where interactions are sometimes slow, impersonal, and rigid. To meet government's objective of increasing the quality of life of its citizen, we must not enter the digital age. We have to embrace the standards of service and performance that define it and excel in the digital age. And I believe that's where I and the other public sector CIOs come in. 
the primary role of Department of Business and Information Services, which the Chief Information Officer heads, is to lead the city of Chicago in the digital age, obviously with meaningful public and private partnership. And that is where those of you from, from private sector come in. Leveraging technology in innovative ways to, is critically important if government wants to match the consumer experience and expectations created by the private sector. And I'm happy that I'm not alone. I'm proud to be in the league of an exceptional cadre of CIOs like John Flynn from CTA, Bob Runcy from CPS, Tom Lynch from Park District, and obviously my peers like Commander Jonathan Lewin from the Chicago Police Department. With that in mind, let's take a quick look at how, under our visionary mayor, direction in the past year, BIS has led a variety of initiatives to improve the ability of city governments to serve Chicagoans. However, before I go into details of our accomplishments, let me show you how challenging a big city CIO's job is. I've been meeting with leading private sector CIOs to benchmark where the city is in terms of technology. As part of that, I visited FedEx's Memphis headquarters in August of last year. I met with uh, the FedEx CIO, Rob Carter's team, and according to them, FedEx has about five major operations or five major processes for which they build their IT. On the other hand, the city is like a big corporate conglomerate. Being the information services agency of the city, I must support a wide range of initiatives, missions, and activities from public safety to court enforcement and from procure to pay to human services. The biggest challenge for me is to provide technology support and tools to agencies with differing missions, and at the same time, ensure that these agencies work as one seamless entity to provide the most effective and timely services possible. To be successful at this challenge, one needs a great team. And I'm really fortunate to lead an excellent team of BIS managers and employees. Some of them are present here today, I'd like to request them to stand up so we can acknowledge them. Thank you. So with productivity, productivity in mind, BIS created and implemented a suite of electronic collaboration tools that are now used by departments to communicate more effectively between one another. This includes the city's new SharePoint portal and the intranet portal. Civil servants from across organizational and geographic boundaries can now use city's SharePoint server and intranet to address issues that increasingly require interdisciplinary attention. From a structural perspective, and this is purely technical, we have created a services-oriented architecture, the technology that allows data to be shared between multiple disparate systems. It's very important in today's world because technology is changing so fast, we have mainframe, we have Paradox, Access, Oracle, SQL Server, all different kinds of systems. And being a large city, we have really grown from mainframe world to today's age. And still, there are legacy systems that we need to exchange data with. So that's why this technology comes in very handy. This enables us to continually reuse web services for different interfaces. This means citizen complaints from our state-of-the-art 311 system can now be shared during an administrative hearing or while an inspector is in the field doing inspect a building inspection. To continue our efforts to improve productivity, we introduced mobile tools for our field workers. For example, for building workers, we introduced uh, a Panasonic Toughbook, uh, basically a, a field mobile device that they can use during the inspections. It's in the pilot phase right now. So here's the before scenario. The before scenario is a, a building inspector would basically go into the office in the morning and then get a list of uh, inspections that he or she is supposed to do on a piece of paper. They would go out, do the inspections, write those notes on a, a piece of paper or maybe in the inspection form, go back to the office at the end of the day, give that to the data entry operator, and it would take days really to get that information into the system and then into other people's, necessary people's hand. With technology, with mobile tools, now what happens is this building inspector goes into the office again in the morning plugs the tough book into the network, downloads all the inspections that he or she is supposed to do it for the day, and then goes out, does the inspection. On the mobile device, they uh, fill the inspection form, which is nothing but uh, some check boxes and, and drop down lists. And within moments, they are done into entering the data into the system. When they come back at, in, the, at the, in the evening, they plug that computer back, and that all the data is actually now in the system loaded. So 
the day's worth of delay is now a few hours worth of delay. That's what technology accomplished, and that's where technology, a simple technology translates a tremendous productivity gain. More tough books to more inspectors in more bureaus and more departments will be rolled out during 2007. The 311 system, 311 is really a feather in Chicago's technology cap. We began a 311 program in 1999 when we implemented a 311 call center for all the quality of life services and police non-emergency services. Most major cities in US, New York, Houston, and Los Angeles, just to name a few, have come to Chicago's 311 center and see our system as the model. In fact, the city of Philadelphia was here last week on a visit looking to implement 311. We look up to Philadelphia looking at their wireless model. They look up to us to look at our 311 system. That's what the uh, interaction is going on. In 2006, people called 311 in record numbers. 4.2 million 311 calls were received in 2006. In addition, through this system, our, our CSR system, as we call the city, uh, the city service request system, we as a city tracked some 2.15 million unduplicated service requests across some 500 categories. Everything from a well-being check on a serious, senior citizen on cold days like today, to repairing and or replacing missing or damaged street signs. Technology now is about putting the right information, right data in right format in the right context, in right people's hand. And 311 exactly does that. The 311 system is used by the city executives towards the city's strategy for performance management. As it provides a single point of contact with citizens and the means of tracking the successful and timely completion of their requests. The following example is from the Public CIO magazine. The Public CIO magazine writes, Chicago receives more than 100,000 street defect complaints per year. The largest potholes, pavement, or sewer cave-ins are real hazards that can result in vehicle damage or unsafe streets. However, it often took city workers a month to fix them while residents continued to call about the same issue. Data analysis revealed two main causes for the delay. First, the urgency of some requests was occasionally misdiagnosed, and second, the responsibility for addressing service requests was not clearly defined between the departments of water management and transportation. To fix the problem, Cities 311 call center formulated better questions for callers to help distinguish regular potholes from more urgent cave-ins. Then, the city made several improvements to the service request flow after the 311 center took the initial call. Interdepartmental communication was improved and unnecessary steps were eliminated from the process. This is what Public CIO magazine writes, but with fewer misdirected work orders, the response time for pavement cavings, as you can see here, dramatically decreased from 11.6 days in two, 2005 to 2.4 days in 2006. In addition, the time for completing sewer cavings repairs went from 23.1 to 19.1 days. And this, I'm not trying to uh, give all the credit to the technology, obviously the managers using the technology and all the thought process that goes behind managing the work orders has a lot to do with this. This was an example of how the correct and directed use of technology improves the city's productivity and helps our citizens immensely. These kind of achievements help me have those 40 plus delighted commissioners and also those who come and hear me here. At the same time, we have been constantly looking for cost savings by eliminating non-critical redundant telecommunication lines and data circuits, we have saved a substantial amount of taxpayer money without compromising the integrity of this city's communication system. For those who don't know, BIS is also responsible for all the telephone lines in the city, entire network that spans across 270 city facilities. So BIS basically looks at these and says where we can save money for the tax taxpayers. Mayor Daly also, wants to increase transparency in government. In the past couple of years, we have used technology to make our government more transparent. All contracts, as you can see now, are available to be viewed online. A list of registered lobbyists is also available online that gets refreshed periodically. At the same time, the mayor is committed to keep everyone in the city government accountable to the taxpayers. In 2005-2006, we made significant investments in Inspector General's office. 
we are, we are working with the Inspector General to make the, his investigators more efficient with the use of technology, which include new secure laptops, completely redesigned network that can now access all the necessary city applications for investigative purposes. And we are working with him to get a new case management system. On the same token, by the end of 2007, we will complete the installation of new biometric time clocks in all the city offices, which will increase employee accountability. So this was what we did in 2006. Let me give you a sneak preview of what's coming in 2007 and beyond. To continue our progress in a managed way, our vision is to continue deploying efficient and effective information technology to improve government efficiency and transparency. We continue aligning new and existing initiatives with four key objectives. Increased productivity for the city employees, better interactions between the citizens and the government, greater transparency in government, and last but the most important, improved return on the taxpayer's investment. First goal, improved productivity. I truly believe that all the city employees chose careers in, in the government to contribute as much as possible to the community. Moving forward, we will help them increasing their productivity through the de development of innovative applications. To begin with, we are publishing an RFP in the next few weeks for a citywide electronic document and workflow management system. This will help us keep track of our tasks and our work products in a much better way. We are also working on implementing an online hiring and onboarding system, enabling our human resources professional in every department, especially in the Department of Human Resources, to quicken the process of evaluating, hiring, and retaining, that's the most important thing, the talented employees from across the city, country, and being online from the globe. Second goal, increased interaction between government and citizens. Technology can be a powerful tool in facilitating and redefining interactions between people and organizations, and we are seeing this. this the, the whole world around us is changing so fast in the last five to 10 years, it has changed so fast. The interactions, the way we interact with people, the way we interact with the organizations has dramatically changed. In 2007, City will create a new Explore Chicago website, as well as redesign the city's internet portal and BIS, along with City's Graphics and Reproduction Center, will make it easier for visitors, residents, and businesses to access the information and services they seek from the city. Most of the IT we deploy reach to our residents through one of our 40 plus departments. For that to be successful, our department heads also have to be focusing on how they can improve their reach to the residents or businesses through IT. Fortunately, all of our commissioners and department heads understand this. And some of them are present here and they will definitely say that they understand the value of technology and how they, that can help them reach the residents of Chicago. We are working closely with the Department of Procurement Services to create applications that will allow vendors working with the city or those who aspire to work with the city to file the economic disclosure statements online, making the process easy and faster. One of city's priorities is to increase and encourage diversity. I'm actively encouraging minority and women-owned businesses, IT businesses especially, to get certified with the city we are also working on an online application where departments can monitor minority participation for their contracts. These compliance reports will also be available to be viewed by subcontractors. This application will be, is also one of the applications that should be rolled out in 2007. At the same token, we are working with the Department of Constructions and Permitting to bring more permits online. That means electrical permit, water heater permit, garage permits, all these permits are actually available online to be applied and to, to receive. Sign permits and some, uh, some other major project permits can be applied online and then you have to come in to the office just to fo as a follow up. Because of this, the percentage of building permits applications filled out online increased from 17% in 2005 to 34%, 100% increase in 2006. The permits issued online also raised from 15 to 32%. The city, licenses about 60,000 plus businesses in Chicago. At City's Department of uh, Business Affairs and Licenses, we rolled out an online business license renewal application in 2006. Again, a before and after scenario. 
Prior to the online license renewal system, businesses had to come to City Hall during normal business hours, obviously. We work 8.30 to 4.30. You work 8.30 to probably 8 o'clock in the evening. But you have to come from during your normal business hours, 8 to 5, to renew your licenses. This obviously caused inconvenience to business owners as they would have to leave their businesses, come downtown, pay for parking, and wait in sometimes long, very, very long lines. Typically during the last week of renewal, we see about 700 customers per day. Now business customers can renew their licenses online 24 by 7 while watching WGN News. They do not have to leave their businesses. I'm not trying to advertise here any news that you're watching. <laughs> they do not have to leave their business. They can complete a renewal in two to five minutes and they can renew at a time that works for them and does not interrupt their business operation. In 2006, the first full year of operation, 20% of business licenses were renewed online. This has meant shorter lines and less frustrations at renewal. We are working very hard and we want your support to increase that number in 2007. In 2007, City is also launching an online application for new licenses. The first area to go live will be the retail sector. We expect that to be available in the first half of 2007. Once that is complete, we will add additional license types and we expect to have all of them rolled out by 2008. We develop these tools in response to business community's request that we use technology to provide better services. In keeping with the mayor's commitment to the business community, we are constantly looking for ways to make it easier for businesses to use technology to transact business and get the information and assistance they need to run a successful business in Chicago. Let's talk about our third goal, transparency. Throughout all of our work going forward, the department shares the city's values of openness and honesty. And accordingly, transparency becomes one of our key objectives each initiative will have. Each initiative that we are gonna do in 2007 will have a set of measurable performance indicators, ensuring that we are continuously measuring our success in bracket failure and adjusting towards greater efficiency. BIS will regularly report on these indicators to the mayor and to all Chicagoans through forums like this. We are focusing heavily right now on getting more transparency into subcontractor payments. Beginning next month, the city will require all the vendors to report on their intended payments to minority and women subcontractor payments. The reports to the city will be pushed to the web to bring transparency to sub subcontractors about minority participation and compliance. Our last, but the most important goal, increased value for taxpayers' money. We recognize that investments in technological infrastructure often come at a significant cost to taxpayers. And the Department of Business and Information Services will ensure that city revenues are used prudently and efficiently. To that extent, we have formed an Information Technology Governance Board that reviews and prioritizes all major technology initiatives projects and expenditures to ensure that they are the most effective way of moving towards the city's goals. The IT Governance Board consists of high-ranking officials from the Mayor's Office, the Budget Department, and BIS. Let's talk about a different topic. Let's move away from the city's technology and let's, let's talk about the citizen-facing role, a changing role of a public sector CIO. It's vitally important that government uses technology to improve its own ability to provide public services. Furthermore, it's essential that these efforts are guided by a thoughtful vision. But the digital age also means that technology has tremendous economic, social, and policy implications for the public. And again, that's where the citizen-facing role comes in. Think about this. What would Chicago look like if aviation department City's aviation department only arranged travel services for city employees. If the Chicago Police Department only ensured the safety of the civil servants, or if the Chicago Fire Department only put out blazes at the city hall or daily center, it would be absurd to imagine these important services being limited only to the members of the government. Similarly, the technology, the city technology that we provide, should also not be limited to the members of the government. In the digital age, the government information technology departments are, are called to be not only citizen-focused, but also citizen-facing. 
For Chicagoans to compete or even participate in the 21st century economy that rewards ingenuity, inventiveness, and innovation, our city must be technologically savvy and literate. And although it isn't as concrete as teaching the first graders how to read or provide housing for the homeless, the Department of Business and Information Services can and must make important contributions directly to the nearly 3 million residents of Chicago. For starters, Mayor Daly has created a Mayor's Technology Council to advise the policymakers in the executive and legislative branches on issues relating to the city's technological competitiveness. The Council's goal for 2007 is to create new public-private partnerships aimed at three targets. As you can see them here, first, we are committed to achieving digital excellence. We are not talking digital divide. We are not talking digital inclusion. We want to be excellent. We want to be digitally excellent in Chicago. A citywide standard for access and competency in basic information technology. Second, we will take decisive action to attract and retain technologically oriented young people, particularly those who are graduating from our world-class universities. And the third, we will work to focus our economic development efforts around innovation, creating a vibrant entrepreneurial ecosystem with strong university industry connections, a cadre of talented entrepreneurs, and a deep pool of risk capital. With Chicago's technology leaders working closely with the city at the Technology Council, I'm certain that we will take big strides towards our goals in 2007. The city also recognizes that despite our best economic development efforts, there are a growing number of people that risk being unable to take advantage of city's progress because they simply aren't on the grid. Locally, nationally, and globally, there is a clear divide between information haves and information have-nots. To make Chicago a leader in correcting this inequality, Mayor Daly also created a Mayor's Advisory Council on bridging the digital divide, and we have a uh, Alderman Lorino, Commissioner Norma Reyes, and a lot of other members sitting here today in the audience. And this council, which is chaired by MacArthur Foundation Vice President Julia Stash, is a diverse group of composed of technological executives, government officials, academics, and community leaders from all parts of the city. Chicagoans and the city council is represented by Alderman Lorino. After eight months of public testimony and best practices research, the council is expected to present its recommendations pretty soon. As part of the overall strategy of digital inclusion, bringing, bridging the digital divide, less than a year ago, we initiated, the city initiated, obviously with the, our visionary mayor, and definitely uh, for, with Alderman Burke and Alderman Lorino as a spearhead of the effort, we initiated a process to bring high-speed internet access to all Chicagoans using wireless technology. To build the community wireless broadband network, the city will create a public-private partnership with the selected vendor or vendors. In exchange for providing non-exclusive access to city-owned infrastructure, such as streetlights, communication towers, and buildings, the selected partner or partners will construct and operate a wireless internet network that will be offered to citizens at an affordable rate. The city will work with its partner, with its private partner, and community groups to use the network to provide important information and services to the Chicagoans that need it most. Chicago's wireless network will also play a critical role in increasing access to technology in Chicago public schools, enhancing economic development, and improving the quality of government services. To recap, we talked about how IT has changed in the last few years, how city is using IT to improve our productivity, increase government transparency, increase taxpayer value, and create an environment for better citizen government interaction. As Chicago CIO, I'm tremendously excited to have the chance to work with the leaders like you from all industries and sectors, neighborhoods, and backgrounds. Together, we can continue to enhance Chicago's image as a global city and a technology leader. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Mike Radzalowski. I'm an attorney. I also was formerly a Chicago school teacher, 
and my question is, I mean, and the city has done incredible things. How, or if any of that is coordinating what is going on with the Chicago Public Schools, because it would seem a lot of what you're doing should be what they're doing to improve how kids get educated, how parents know what's going on, and things of that sort. Absolutely, and I'm definitely sure that Bob Runcy and I, uh, Bob Runcy would agree with me that we always try to work together. And as part of the wireless broadband network, we are also asking the vendors to make sure that at the Chicago Public Schools, we provide the free internet and also make sure that that would be, become a tool for a better parent-teacher interaction. Thank you. Thank you. Club uh, rewards you with the most transparent gifts you can possibly ever receive. A wonderful City Club mug. Thank you. A one year membership in the City Club, which, by the way, after one year, and you pay up. Yes. And a history of the City Club. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adjourned.